Hello and welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name is Dennis van Kampen and in this video tutorial series we're going to discuss SAP HANA installations. In this video tutorial I will show you how to install the SAP HANA server. I'm connected here to a Windows computer and I will start the PuTTY terminal client. This will give me a connection to the HANA server. I've stored a session here which I will load and as you can see it contains the IP the port, these are all the defaults, and then under data here, connection data, we've set up a other login name, and for secure shell, we set up the key file, and we've also enabled X window forwarding using this utility Xming, which will allow us to display X window applications on our Windows desktop. So if we return to our session and open it, I uh, here have a buddy session as the user roots to my HANA server. Now I will now change directory to the DVD. This is an alias we set up. It just contains the contents of the complete support package stack nine uh, installation media. So if we go down one level to the data units, we see here all the different components that are part of this DVD. I will change to the server installation directory. And here we have our three installers HTB LCM, HTB LCM GUI, and HTB LCM Web, which is new as of support package stack 9. However, you cannot run this from the command line because it's a web based tool. So we'll use this later on to update our server. To install, let's first start with the HTB LCM command line. Let me make the screen a little bit bigger so everything will display correctly. So we can run our command HTB LCM. It has detected a certain number of components. We have the database, we have AFL, we have the live cache application, the database client. However, what I'm missing here is the SAP HANA Studio. So I'll accept here the uh, selection three, which is exit do nothing. And then we'll run HTTP LCM with the component root flag and provide as path my slash DVD. This time it has detected studio. We have the options to update our current installation or install a new system. So it's option two. Then we're going to select the components for installation. So we can just install the SAP HANA server with no additional components. We can install all components or uh, make a, a selection and you can make a comma separated list. So for example, uh, you could say uh, one and then client three and then studio seven, for example, this would be a valid selection. Then you enter the local host name, this is the computer name of the server, just accept the default. And the installation path, the default again is slash HANA slash shared. We've set that up already, so that's correct. Then you need to provide the SAP HANA system identifier, the SID. So for example, we can do here a TST for test. And the instance number, it would just pick up the next available instance number. So we already have an installation on instance number 00. So 01 is the next one. Enter next. Then we're going to select the database mode. This is new as of support package stack 09. We can install it in single container or with multiple containers. That's the, uh, the multi-tenant feature of SAP HANA. We'll just select one here. The database mode. Will it be a production system test development or customer? Unless you select production, it doesn't really matter whether you select test development or custom. It doesn't affect any uh, functionality. It's more of a, of a tag, of a label. Production, however, will impact some, uh, some screens in SAP HANA Studio. So I'll just leave it here to custom. Then we're going to select the location of uh, data volumes. The default is the slash HANA slash data and then the SID, which is fine with me. Same for log volumes. Do we want to restrict memory allocation, I'll say no. Next question is the certificate host name for the host. This is in case the local host has a different name than externally. And if you exit it externally from a browser, you will get an error for the uh, SAP HANA XS type applications. It will say certificate mismatch and have a red cross in it, which may confuse or concern the, uh, the users. So here you could update this in, the, in our case, it's not necessary. Then we're going to provide the system administrator password. I'll just use the home directory. Again, these are default settings, the login shell, the 
the user ID, the database user, the system, a password, do we want to restart the instance automatically after the machine reboot notice that the default here is no so you may want to set this to yes and then it will just give us a complete overview of all the selections we've made asking us if we want to continue if i would say yes the installation will start so i'll say no here and show you also how this can be done using the graphical installer so the only thing we have to change here is HTTP LCM GUI for the graphical uh, installer. This will start an X window program, so we need to have to so we need to have done some configuration. In our case, X Windows is installed on the HANA server. We have used the X window forwarding flag for PuTTY, and we're running X Ming server to uh, to be able to display this. So if we run it now, it will give us a Windows application. Uh, we minimize this and um, again we get the list of detected software components should any component be missing uh, you can also here browse for the component location you do not have this option in the command line tool selecting next again the selection do we want to update or install a new system we're going to install a new system we're going to install HANA database client HANA studio the those are selected by default uh, as is the database server selecting next do we want a single host or a multiple host system note that this question was also not asked in the command line installer we're going to select your single host then we're going to specify the system properties so the local host name of the hana server the installation path again slash hana slash share the default the system id so i will do tst again instance number the next available the database mode here we have whether it's going to be a single container or a multiple container multi-tenant mode the system usage is going to be production test development or custom do we want to restrict maximum memory allocation say you if you have a number of hana instances running on a development box and you may want to allocate that a bit depending on the usage and here we have the checkbox do we want to restart the instance after machine reboot i will select next i can specify here the data and a lock area i'll click next again certificate host properties we could edit here the certificate host this is for HANA access here we're going to enter the password for our system administrator the user id login shell and home directory accepting defaults here going here we're going to enter the password of the database user select next i have my summary and this time i will run install Installation is typically very quick. We're just going to copy over the files. Then we're going to start the HANA instance. We're going to import a certain number of uh, components, uh, text, text analytics, SAP UE5, etc. And then we're going to add the SAP HANA database client, SAP HANA Studio. We selected those components. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I will just fast forward this video here for you. When done, you can uh, select the view logs button to uh, view the logs and otherwise finish to finish. Okay, so much for installing the SAP HANA server. Installing SAP HANA server is documented in the SAP HANA server installation and update guide, which you can download free of charge from the SAP help portal on help.sap.com. Thank you for watching this SAP HANA Academy video.